Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. We appreciate that. Also, give this video a like. Also, podcast below in the description. I need you to subscribe to that as well. Like the video. Subscribe to the page. Subscribe to the podcast. You guys know the drill. Uh, we love Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, because there's always some rumors, nuggets. Sunday morning during the CBS pregame, Jason Lock and Forrest said Kyle Shanahan likes Sam Darnold. Uh, it's just the, the quarterback trade discussion is is nonstop. We talked about it a little bit on the stream, but you would have to pick up his fifth-year option in early May. So you're looking at about two years and $30 million. Remember Adam Schefter told us late first-round pick. Uh, what do you think? Where do you think it stands right now? Uh, and the Niners have the 12th overall pick, so they don't have a late first-round no, pick. Don't. And I think it's we both agree 12 for Darnold is a, probably a non-starter. I mean, that's not. I would agree. <clears throat> that feels like you're paying double or something, right? Two dollars for a dollar, way almost. too much. I mean, you telling me <laughs> yeah. the guy got picked second, had three bad years, and now he only drops ten spots. Yeah, it, right. It, he got picked second. Yeah, third, third. third. So yeah. he drops nine spots in the draft. No way. Yeah, but to me, I, I'd say his draft stack, like he's holding on to being known as the third overall pick. I just kind of view him like he's a first round talent. I, you know, is he a top five pick? I, I'm on the fence, but I do like him. I'm not done with him. You and I both noticed, and we had talked about. Robert Sala refused to name him the head, uh, the starting quarterback once he became the head coach. Won't do it. And we brought it up with Schefter, and uh, he didn't think it was that crazy. And listen, I was like, I get it, Adam, but you watch. Like, my, my point was on that, most coaches lie. And my take on Robert Sala is if you remember two years ago with Kevin Durant with the Warriors, he had a blow up with the media because he was tired of lying about his free agent status. He knew he was going to leave. And my theory is on guys in press conferences, when you talk a lot, if you are a really, really good human at your core, it's hard to just consistently, you're just lying through the mic, you know it, you feel like a two-face. When I think Robert Sala, I think really, really high character, high level guy. And if you watch his press conference with the Niners, he kind of just shot straight. Like he wasn't a big blow smoke up people's asses, but he wasn't crushing guys, but he was just very honest. I think that's his thing with Kyle and and Robert. But Kyle, I think, can lie a little bit more than Salah. Like, I, Salah, I, I think they know he's gone. And could this be using through Lock and Fora or people to, to get his value up, knowing that other teams might be interested, that knowing the Niners might like him? I do think if you watch Sam Darnold, high character guy, good athlete, uh, you know, not a great arm, but, you know, the Shanahan family's never been addicted to arm strength, beside like Elway. Uh, he kind of makes some sense in the offense, right? Can move around uh, pretty tough. A little bit of a project in the sense of he's been in the league three years, but he needs some work. Now, part of it is if you're defending Sam Darnold, you go, his organization's been a joke, right? I mean, they just, their owner was in Europe. Donald sent him over there. <laughs> so his brother took over. They had a GM who didn't, who just sat in an office and drank coffee, didn't talk to anybody. He got fired. Todd Bowles got fired. They bring in Adam Gase, and then Joe Douglas comes in after the draft. It's just, it, it was always just a lot of shit going on for a young quarterback. It, it was. I mean, but. He got he got mono for kissing a chick. Yes, he did. Um, <laughs> he had moments that would make me want to pl have him on my team. But he had a lot of moments that would make me not want to pay too much for him. And, you know, we'll, we'll see, like, part of the Wentz thing does Wentz end up in a place that would have been a Darnold bitter? That would have been a team that would have liked Darnold? That, does that take somebody out? Does that lower the price at all? Um, it, it's, it, I think there are two factors with both these guys. One's younger. One has way more time to like. I think you could still view one as more of a draft prospect. The other guy's made all this cash, injury prone, like – there's been no question contracts about contracts already set. Whether Don, the, the, Darnold is liked in the locker room, I don't think that's a lot, been a lot of variables with both with Wentz that maybe Darnold doesn't have, but his talent to me is the bigger question mark. Yeah, yeah. I I I think I remember and I've, we've said this that this Darnold's group of quarterbacks Shanahan did watch, so Shanahan does have an opinion on him, right? And to your point, like there's just a lot of stuff that's happened in New York. Now I do think there are people that say. Just be careful with those SC quarterbacks. Like they're throwing it up to some elite level talents and don't be fooled too much by the college tape. But, you know, I think if you're Kyle, you look at it and go, I don't, 
I, I, I can give the I can put any quarterback in position to make the most of his ability. I just need a guy with a little more athleticism than the guy I've got. Uh, maybe a little more durability than the guy I've got. Maybe a little more just kind of natural playmaking ability, right? Some off script playmaking. I think ability. I, I just think I think you have to have that now. Which Darnold does have. <clears throat> there are times you, it's weird. He there are times I watch him and I go, I don't think his arm's very good. And there are other times I watch him and I go, That's there aren't too many guys that could have made that play. I think I think Romo mentioned it on early in the broadcast. If Tom Brady was coming into the league now, the league would not be conducive to the Tom Brady's, right? The league is trending Mahomesy. He's the best version, but moving around, running around for his life. If you had flip flopped those two quarterbacks tonight, Tom Brady would have been awful, right? It would have been killed. fifty to six. Yeah, he wouldn't have been able to move. Like, and I think we saw moments last year. I guess Jimmy and Mullen, some of those guys can move, but when they played the better quarterbacks, the Josh Allens, the guys that can just keep plays alive, you know where I stand. I, I think Tom Brady's a Peyton. I think it's over. I think it's dead. Now, maybe not forever. Maybe we cyclical things come back. But for the foreseeable future, I had a conversation with a high school coach at a smaller level, and he said he hasn't messed around with a non-mobile quarterback in two decades. And he's like, now all my friends in the CIF and the state of California just producing all these guys. Everywhere you go, guy, you're not, they're not a player. Jared Goff at Marin Catholic or whatever, they don't exist. So, like, I part of it, like, Jimmy was kind of in the middle. He definitely wasn't Tom. He could move around. But he still was more toward a pocket quarterback than run around guy. And whatever he ran around, for whatever reason, he'd get hurt. Uh, I, I just think you need that mobility. And that is one thing that Sam – you know, really hung his hat on when he was at SC, even in his moments with the Jets. They played well down the stretch, though, right? They played well against the Raiders. They went mm -hmm. to L.A. and beat the Rams. I thought they were playing pretty good. They, all their guys got healthy. Clearly, Sam was playing pretty good football. But are you Never confident? Quit. I think I said this to you before. Are you confident that Sam Darnold's better than Jimmy Garoppolo? I think his ceiling's higher. But are you no. confident that 16 games of Sam Darnold's better than 16 games of Jimmy Garoppolo? I'm, I'm not. Think, now, if you can make him better— you He's would say we've seen Jimmy's best, right? There, To me, there's a chance. And we're going to find out about this other guy. My, my comparison with Sam Darnold is there's some similarities with Jameis that let's say Jameis goes back to the Saints. I think we're really going to learn. Is he Mr. Turnover prone or was it just kind of that offense? He was letting it rip. Can he be like a, a really good player? Because you would say if he's the starting quarterback next year for the Saints, like we're going to find out. Maybe he's just – that's just him, right? It's just short circuits, boom. It's like me or you hitting a golf ball. More than likely, we're going to hit it in the trees. And that's just Jameis can't. I do think there's part of Sam Darnold to like. And Jimmy has some of this too. Like, are you just going to throw a lot of picks? Are you just going to throw a lot of balls that you go, because <gasps> Tom doesn't. Rodgers doesn't. Russell, for the most part, doesn't either. Deshaun, like all the good court. Josh Allen this year did not really. It, to me, Sam, I always just felt like when a play gets to a certain point and like Adam Gase or whoever hasn't scripted it to that, it's just on him to make the play. I think the, the way that football people talk it like outside of the offense, right? Can you make a play outside of the script when the, when the play breaks down, like cousins doesn't have the ability because he doesn't have the athletic. Ability. Yeah. But that's where we get back to Kyle Shanahan. But he, but eventually a play breaks down. It's just, it's just, that's what my point is. Within the and then I think Darnold becomes a huge liability from what I've seen. Now, can Kyle and his and his little and you know I almost said little guys. One of them left Lafleur, McDaniel's, Wes. Can they help harness that to like we? I you have to live with some gunslinger. Like I can't have a guy that never throws turns the ball over. Right. I just worry about that a little. With Sam's got a little Jameis to him, and that was remember a knock. After he had the big year at SC, right, his next year at SC, he had a lot of turnovers. Yeah. I remember very Jameis-like. Yeah. Remember Jameis's last year at Florida State? It's like, God, he's turning the ball over. You know what turns out? Those two guys, I think, just see something that, like, they just pull the trigger in places that a guys won't pull the trigger. But it doesn't even feel like, what do you – like, sometimes Rivers is just like, trying to make a play, guys. <laughs> you know, like, are you, Phillip? <laughs> or he's just, like, throwing it up. Yeah, yeah. I The, the, the one thing you would definitely say about – the 49ers would be that the structure and just kind of the organization of talent around him would be better than anything he's had, like from a wide receiver talent standpoint, right? Kittle plus IU plus Debo Samuel. I think I read a rumor. They might, they're going to try to resign Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne. Well, that'd be their great. running I mean, backs are going to, their running backs are going to be good. He has not had anything like that in the, in New York. 
Guy, Frank Gore was a starting running back this year. Oh, the Niners might just... bring him back, John Poor, according to Twitter. No, Frank said he wanted to come back, and then Grant Cohn was like, crushed him. Basically called him a scrub. Joe Staley told Grant to shut up. Grant, like Grant, Grant later tweeted, still here. <laughs> Great tweet. <laughs> but it's like, Grant, no one – I actually side with Grant on this one. They're not going to bring Frank Gore back. He's yeah. not any good. But the point is, I'm defending Darnold that way. He, that's who his running back was last year. Frank Gore was a starter. To me, the Darnold acquisition, my opinion of it, will center on the compensation. A first-round pick, I, it'll – It'll be pretty like if you flip if you say all right we'll we'll flop twenty we'll take the Jets twenty third pick right Niners send uh, Niners send twelve for Darnold and twenty three even that you're essentially feel, giving them a first round pick that's crazy I that yes. was I thought about that, that was nuts yes you that was your idea and I think the Jets would say yes to that a little too quickly for your liking here's the risky part too with Sam Darnold let's just say hypothetically you get him for a third rounder two threes. Here's the elephant in the room with him. He just might not be good. So you, whatever you pay for him, you might pay like 50 cents on the dollar, and then all of a sudden you realize you can't buy anything with your 50 cents. You realize he's right? not better than Garoppolo. Yeah. But there's a, I think you're already know what you there's think a, of Garoppolo. There's a pretty good chance he's not as good as Jimmy Garoppolo. He's risky. There's a lot of risk involved. I do it because I've got to take a risk. I can't go through last year, but there's a huge risk involved. Hell, I do Wentz too. Yeah, part of this is well. well, Part of it is I just believe in Kyle. Yeah, and at twelve, it'd be one thing if you were drafting at five and you felt like, well, I mean, who do you think the second best quarterback is? But it doesn't matter who you think the second best quarterback in this draft is. You can't get him, right? I do think I do. I would imagine Sam. He turns twenty four in June, so he's really young. Think how much more comfortable he'd be out here. From L.A., California, just a little easier. <laughs> I mean, guys, sometimes I text. I know some reporters, like with Philly. I, I mean, I know half the staff there. They tell me verbatim things I've heard that I would never say. It is crazy how intense it is in, like, Philly in New York. And just the the story. All the reporters know everything that's going on inside. Not like, like when people get mad at each other. They know the draft board. It's like, I, we do not know that out here. Matt Mayoko might know a couple things. He does not know all the inner work. It's just much more laid back. It's an easier animal to just take a deep breath. Can you imagine the things this kid went through the last three years? Now, some of it's his own doing, but he inherited a lot of just their madness, right? Yeah. Gase. Didn't he go? Was he? I guess he wouldn't have been there huh, when Sark got fired, but... Or what do you been? Uh, he might have been redshirting. The Alabama year wasn't that Clay? Wasn't Clay coaching yeah, it, when it, they get no, beat? No, it was. But that was his second year, right? That he was a yeah, redshirt. Yeah, so freshman. maybe he was there the year before with Sark. Oh, that was Clay's first year, the Alabama year. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Full, full year. You think it was the second year? I'm just. I'm, my point is like maybe he's just been used to chaos now for everywhere he's been. <laughs> I don't think chaotic. you get used to chaos. I think you just fail in too much chaos. Or you just it's you go in survival mode, right? You're just trying to keep your head above water. Well, I think when you succeed, like Tom and Peyton and Rogers and even Russell in Seattle, they're not like survival mode. They're just locked in. They're focused. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. I think when the, when Jimmy had success, there's not like all this external stuff. You just get to lock in. You know, everything stays stable around you. The Jets are a joke, guy. But, I mean, but again, we're talking were. about all this stuff that was like he still played football games and they weren't pretty, right? On a terrible team with a coach that everyone. No, no, no. Was no, no I, I know, I know. I'm just saying his like, coach. His coach was getting openly made fun of, like he was Freddie Kitchens. I know. I'm just saying he did play football games that we watched. We also openly talked about the team, about having the least amount of talent in the league by a wide margin. Yeah, there's no doubt. I'm. I'm but I'm, he threw. He's 49th. He's basically a one-to-one -one touchdown to pick ratio. I mean, the stats aren't good. How many? What, what were the numbers this year? Uh, 59%, 9 and 11. Nine touchdowns, 11 picks. His stats are, his stats are hideous. He, he started, he's, yeah, I mean, he obviously started every game he's ever played in 38 out of 38. In those games, here's the number that's really concerning, which only Kyle and McDonald's you know, and Mike McDaniels, I'm sure, done deep dive. 
he's not even at 60%. Yeah. Like in this modern day league, that's that, that's back uh, to my Jameis thing. Does it feel like he's even less accurate than Jameis? Like Jameis is better. J- yeah, Jameis, Jameis has absolutely Darnold? been better NFL quarterback. <laughs> yeah. His stats are awful. Nine lost fumbles. Like I couldn't trade a first round pick for him, John. I, I... <laughs> no. Well, he's the type guy back in the day that probably like when we were growing up in the nineties, a guy like him, like a coach that was kind of desperate would trade for him and then he'd suck and he everyone would get fired. Like that's kind of the guy he's historically been, like that individual. Probably in all sports, right? A lot of hype holding on to this USC draft mm-hmm. spot. Mm-hmm. We're two it's two two thousand twenty one. Okay, he was drafted in two thousand eighteen, right? That's a pretty long time ago. The stats are awful. But there are multiple teams that need quarterbacks, so it can get weird. Here's what I do know. If Wentz and Darnold are traded this week, one of those two, one of those trades is going to be a royal, uh, like a legendary disaster. For the acquiring team. Yeah. It's going to fail very badly. It'll be one of those like, like, three weeks into the back, season where like, oh fire. my God, it yeah. didn't work. Yeah. Could be, it could get ugly quick. 